Okay. Good morning. Everyone is okay? Okay, it will be a small session as you see, probably because PCI compliance is very closed uh, topic and very, let's say, hermetic. So uh, not many people doing this, especially not many people doing this uh, in the cloud. And I think in OpenStack, it's only you know, a bunch of people that actually did something with PCI. Of course, there are some um, huge institutions, uh, financial institutions, that are uh, currently deploying OpenStack, and they have needs for uh, compliance. That's why this talk was born, actually. A uh, few words about me. Uh, I have a system administration background. Um, like, for 16 years, I'm working as sysadmin and DevOps. Uh, also for financial institutions, for big companies, huge companies. I was uh, leading an effort to um, implement a PCI in one of the uh, biggest European payment processors. Uh, I was a tech lead on that project. Uh, we did that successfully. We passed our first audit. But that was not on the cloud. That was 2011. No one was even thinking about OpenStack. Uh, also, uh, certification on public clouds was kind of unknown ground, so uh, I don't actually have experience passing out it on uh, on the cloud. So that's the uh, that's the uh, main information. <coughs> but but as you know, uh, PCI audit is a painful process. I don't know who of you actually went through the audit. Okay, one, two, three. Kinda, which means that you didn't pass, or? Okay, so how many people, four people? Okay, four people, that's interesting. Uh, so, those of you that went through the process, you know that uh, this is probably more unpleasant than visit to the dentist, so um, uh, we are all suffering. Uh, a little bit about Mirantis, usually, uh, I showed this slide in Europe, in America, and probably in Asia and in Hong Kong. Everyone knows Mirantis. Uh, we are Mountain View based. We are probably the biggest independent OpenStack consulting company or services provider. Uh, main office is in Mountain View. We also have offices in uh, Kharkov, in uh, Moscow, Saratov in Russia. And the last addition is Poland, when I am based. Uh, there's a bunch of uh, engineers in Poland working on OpenStack, not only for European customers, also for American customers, because uh, <coughs> uh, OpenStack presence in Europe is not that strong that uh, in America, but it's changing. One of the signs is Mirantis' um, presence in Europe. So that's the slide for Europe. That's the slide for America. Uh, I hope everyone knows Mirantis. Uh, uh, we have together about 400 engineers, and we did 60 successful deployments of OpenStack from uh, medium, small scale up to very large scale, uh, and large, I mean thousands of hypervisors. Okay, a little bit about uh, agenda. I asked who of you uh, passed the audit, so not many of you, so I bet that you're interested how to do it uh, with OpenStack. So who of you actually runs OpenStack in production? That's cool. And who wants to run, or who runs financial applications on that? I know Jonathan runs, I'm sure. <laughs> uh, who wants to run financial applications? All right, so we will have like a common, uh, common ground here. Uh, it won't be easy to do, and I won't uh, give you like a, uh, you know, golden uh, way to do it, because there's no golden way to do it, as you know. Uh, also, my, uh, from my experience, uh, European auditors tend to be more stricter than American auditors, so it might be easier in America to pass the audit than in Europe. Uh, that's my experience from discussions with uh, our customers, how they went through audit, how they implemented uh, compensating uh, means, and so on. In Europe, it's really uh, a little bit complicated than in America. I don't know why. 
maybe because PCI is from America, so European institutions are trying to be uh, more of a king uh, than a king itself. Okay, short agenda. Mm. We'll talk a little bit about the state of compliance in the cloud. So what we have, what we had in the past, uh, what is now, what are the uh, mm, approaches now. Uh, then I will show you what we did for one of the, our customers for this project that I'm presenting. Uh, we'll go through all the modules we provide and other tools we provide. And at the end, uh, I'll try to um, provide you with practical tips. Uh, uh, practical tips, by practical tips, I mean um, um, our experience when analyzing entire OpenStack stack, let's say. Because at the beginning of the project, we took all the internal projects of OpenStack, we analyzed them uh, according to the PCI 12 requirements, and we made remarks what's implemented, what's not implemented, what can be done easily, uh, what uh, needs patching of, of OpenStack or using external tools, and so on and so on. Uh, I will not cover securing the VMs, and by, the, by VM I mean your application. So because Mirantis provides clouds, we build clouds, we're not application specialists. So we don't know what you run inside of hypervisor. So our uh, experience ends at the hypervisor level. So what's inside VM, that's totally uh, your responsibility as a cloud operator, except maybe for networking, which is uh, like, which is very, uh, the hypervisor networking is connected very much to the VM networking. So that's one of the uh, areas that we cover a little bit. Okay, PCI itself, uh, all of you know what PCI is. Uh, so uh, for us, what's important here is that we're covering PCI DSS uh, version two, obviously. Uh, and we'll try to cover all 12 requirements we have in, uh, in the standard. Uh, general approach is to protect uh, customer data, so the, uh, or card data. So the biggest impact is on protecting the data itself. So processing data takes place inside of the uh, OpenStack infrastructure. Uh, and the main point when the data, uh, well, it's stored at process is probably, uh, are probably images, glance, and snapshots. Unfortunately, there's no easy way to protect uh, that part. It very much uh, depends on the backend that is used in glance, for example. Uh, so it's really up to the implementation. We, we, don't, we don't cover protecting the data at the glance level. So what we had uh, in the past is that like pre-2012, let's say when I was going through the audit, 2011, uh, everyone thought that it's probably impossible to be compliant using the cloud. Well, then we, we didn't have OpenStack. In 2011, there was no OpenStack, really. Uh, there were other clouds, like Open Nebula um, and so on. But I don't think anyone was trying to go through the audit. There were some institutions trying to move their processing to public clouds, like Amazon. But I think that the, the, the assumption was it's not possible. So everyone was moving, like, uh, not crucial parts to the cloud. And no one was thinking about actually moving data processing, card processing into the cloud. Uh, in between 2011 and 2013, uh, OpenStack was born and many institutions started to think about moving their processing to, uh, to OpenStack, for example, from VMware or from other virtualization tools. Uh, but still there was no easy way to do it. Then in July, uh, there was, uh, famous uh, blog post on right scale blog by Phil Cox. I don't know if you know it. Do you know that blog post about going through the audit on uh, cloud? If not, I uh, strongly encourage you to, 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 to read that post. It was Phil Cox. And he provided a way to uh, actually uh, be compliant on public cloud, which sounded then, which sounded really amazing and actually I think they went through the audit with one of the customers. So it started to be possible. Uh, also, this year, 
PCI DSS published uh, com cloud computing guides. So it means that the uh, council itself sees the need for, uh, for standardizing uh, running financial applications in the cloud. This guide is mainly about public clouds. It introduces the, uh, mm, the uh, something called shared responsibility, which means that uh, the compliance responsibility is shared between you as a, custom, as a uh, customer using the cloud to process the data and the cloud provider. So if you read the PCI uh, computing guide document, Certified cloud provider would be you running your cloud. So in terms of OpenStack cloud, we are CSP. If we are running, operating the cloud, that's our responsibility. Usually, if you are running your internal cloud, you and your, your data, you are the same, the same company. But for, for that document, in OpenStack world, CSP is just you or your sysadmin team operating, running your, uh, your cloud. <coughs> so... With our project, where do we position ourselves? So in that blog post, uh, uh, Phil Cox analyzed all 12 requirements and every requirement uh, or every, his every advice starts with statement, rely on CSP to provide hypervisor or hardware related compliance. In every single requirement, he just moved the responsibility to the cloud provider, which means that the team or uh, people running OpenStack are responsible for the security of hypervisor and hardware, and your application is from the hypervisor level up to the data database and so on and so on. This is very crucial, and uh, to see how important that is that it's 12 times mentioned in, the, in that blog post, that document. Uh, so this is how usual uh, infrastructure looks. So we have some, uh, some kind of physical hardware, uh, server. Uh, we have a networking layer, storage layer. They might be on the same box or on other boxes when using quantum. Uh, then there's a hypervisor, which we, is probably the most important part uh, to secure. And there's the VM. So what our tools are doing is only ensuring that this part uh, is as much compliant as possible. We don't, as I said before, we don't cover what's uh, going inside the VM. So your app is your responsibility, except for networking where we provide some, uh, some means to, to secure. I'm afraid this is not readable. Uh, yeah, unfortunately, there's a lot of requirements as you can see. So there's 12 requirements and what we don't cover is requirement one, uh, four, six, nine, and 12, because we can't, we just can't do it. It's, it's impossible, it's not the responsibility of the cloud operator. The rest is uh, covered in, with our tools in probably 50%. Uh, so a little bit about the project. So the project started because one of the customers mm, was deploying OpenStack with our help, and they were actually running a financial, um, financial application on top of that. They were trying to move from um, traditional virtualization, virtualization into the OpenStack, so we started looking at the OpenStack uh, and uh, its compliance, and the state was really bad, really, really bad, because the usual way to deploy OpenStack was to get a, a, like a fresh, uh, operating system, install OpenStack on top of it, and that's it. Mm. Apart from that, OpenStack itself is not very secure. It's not written with compliance and security in mind. It's changing now. After two years of development, the de developers started thinking about the security. There are, uh, for example, one of the biggest problems is keeping uh, passwords inside of the services. So all passwords are plain text. Uh, now there's an effort to, to develop secure store for that. When we started, there was no secure store, so we had to develop our own way to keep passwords, and the same for cryptographic keys and so on and so on. Uh, uh, after, I think, a few weeks, uh, Mirantis um, realized that this might be a very interesting project, so we moved uh, a little bit more engineers. Uh, by the way, 
one of two engineers uh, were actually me and Bartek Kupidura, who is on this uh, on this forum. So in case you have questions, he's like a main technical person for the project. Uh, so we we just threw more engineers inside. Uh, we uh, extended the scale of the project. Uh, some of the parts, like our logging infrastructure and log cor uh, correlation infrastructure, we also used in other projects and we're still using them. So this means that the project is, uh, is modular. So we can take parts of it and use. You don't necessarily have to use the entire project. Originally, this project was uh, meant to be used uh, as a fuel extension. Fuel is our deployment tool. So it, it still can be used as a fuel extension, but it's also just a library you can use. Uh, not using fuel. Of course, I strongly encourage you to use fuel. Uh, up to now, two clients are using this, uh, this library to secure their, uh, their infrastructure. Obviously, there are limitations uh, we have to be aware of. Uh, this project is completely Red Hat or CentOS centric, so no Ubuntu support, unfortunately. Uh, this is because of lack of time, and at the, at the time we started, we were only supporting uh, Red Hat because our customers running Red Hat. Also, some of the tools we are using are only uh, available for Red Hat, so that, that was also um, a problem. As I said, this is only for infrastructure as a service cloud, so this is for cloud operators. If you are interested in running a secure application, this project is not for you. It's for securing uh, infrastructure. So it, this is actually for infrastructure guys. Uh, we don't cover any procedural stuff. Uh, as you know, PCIs has a lot of procedures or policies to be implemented. We don't do that. In one of the documents, in a checklist, uh, in every place, we know that that should be procedured and we cannot do it in technology. We state that, that this should be covered by the procedure. So we, do, we, we give a little help, but we don't write procedures, so we only write code and, and puppet modules. Uh, and there's, this might be a showstopper for some of the people, but we assume that every machine inside of the OpenStack cluster is in the PCI scope. So we secure them uh, at the same, with the same way. So all the machines are secured. Uh, probably controllers are the most secure part of the cluster, which is natural but we also secure compute nodes and so on and so on. Uh, there's no redo, so if you apply the, the Puppet modules, you, you can't do the step back. Of course, you can just enable, uh, in Puppet you can enable backup of all configuration files, but the tool itself does not provide any way of redoing a uh, thing. Uh, during the project, we had to develop some uh, some patches for OpenStack for different components. Uh, at this stage, we don't provide those patches, uh, mainly because we were working on a custom OpenStack uh, distribution. So it would not be easy to apply those patches to um, upstream OpenStack now. We might do it in, in the future. Uh, we'll be thinking about it. But at this stage, we don't provide the patches. Uh, and also, we don't provide firewall management. So we think that using security groups is not enough for, for security in the cloud, and everyone should also run uh, host firewall, uh, preferably with some kind of orchestration, but we don't provide that. Okay, so what's inside? Uh, so we provide tools for basic uh, operating system hardening, uh, like password policies, uh, mm, hardening uh, CTL, uh, hardening other parts of the, of the system. We also had to write uh, proof of concept hardware security modules. This was written uh, because we had to test it. We were running OpenStack with plain text passwords, so we wanted to keep those passwords somewhere else. So we wrote this uh, hardware security module, POC. If it's, of course, software security module because we don't provide hardware, but um, if you put it on very secure host, you might use it as normal hardware security module. Uh, we also provide uh, extensions to auditing system, mainly in form of uh, around 100 uh, audit D rules for all uh, crucial parts of the system and OpenStack and parts of OpenStack uh, system. Uh, 
We also implement log collection system, which is, uh, in this case, Logstash with uh, ZeroMQ and uh, Kibana. Mm, we provide our mm, rules developed by Mirantis, like uh, filters and, and, uh, and parsing rules, rules for OpenStack. We also implement uh, secure communications inside the cluster. So you can do it yourself on your networking gear, but you can use our modules to set up mesh of tunnels between, uh, between uh, controllers. This is actually uh, one of the biggest problems of this implementation because those tunnels are point to point. So every controller has to, has, uh, has to have a tunnel to every other controller. So in, like, in reference, Mirantis OpenStack implementation, we use three controllers, which is okay. Uh, but if you use, imagine, 100 controllers, it might be a problem to set up the mesh of tunnels. It will, be, it will work, but it will be unmanageable, probably. Uh, we also provide audit tools, so you can do a little audit before you implement the rules and then do another audit uh, after you implement the, loose, uh, the, the rules. Uh, we use OpenScap for that, uh, so there's just uh, an extension. Uh, you just run CLI tool and you can see what's the state of your, of your uh, infrastructure. And we also provide documentation. Uh, so, fuel tools itself, it's a, the tool itself is a fuel extension in form of Puppet modules. Uh, OpenStack patches, I hope it they will be available. Uh, also, OpenSCAP profiles, this is called system readiness review, so it's just, uh, well, the tool produces HTML file with uh, all the requirements we need and the state of the requirements on the system, so you, just, you can just run it before applying, after applying, if you output XML, you will have like a nice diff to see what changed. Uh, we provide a documentation, which is an analysis of the state of OpenStack itself. So you not only have uh, uh, compliance tools that you can apply, but you can also see what's not uh, covered by us, by our tool, and what you should do yourself or using external tools or uh, some other providers. And we also provide uh, compliance checklists. So uh, for your security team, you can provide a nice documentation that all that stuff was done, actually. Uh, the compliance is, uh, is uh, PCI DSS uh, point .20, but in some cases, we apply stricter rules, like with password policies, we use uh, NIST recommendations, with, with, which are a little bit uh, more strict. Uh, in the future, we would like to extend this project so you could choose what kind of compliance you want to apply. So, if it will be PCI, this will apply PCI rules. If it will be uh, NIST, this will apply NIST rules, and so on, and so on. Uh, so, in many cases, uh, you should have some external tools, uh, especially LDAP. Uh, it is possible to implement uh, password policies and uh, granular access control inside of OpenStack, but it's very hard. Uh, it requires patching of OpenStack. So the best way is actually uh, use LDAP or Odell Catalog. Uh, and I think that's what most like mid-sized to big-sized organizations do. And then obviously you just push the, uh, uh, the responsibility out of the cloud to the guys managing LDAP, but that's probably the wiser way, uh, the best way to do it. Uh, as I said, we have something called software security module, but it's not production ready. So uh, in most cases, you should use uh, HSM or uh, use CloudKeep. This is a new project developed, I think, by RightScale and Rackspace, uh, which is a mm, secure storage for keys, passwords, and so on. Very interesting project. I think it was uh, announced uh, last summit in Portland. Uh, oh, all right, cool. So. Well, you're welcome to just change the room and go uh, and, and, and hear about the cloud keep. Uh, so obviously, instead of using our, let's say, crappy uh, software security module, uh, you should use, probably you should use cloud keep. Uh, MySQL or other database, we are concentrating on MySQL. 
it, during the audit, it's one of the crucial parts to be secured. Uh, in this case, we don't store passwords inside those that, uh, or card data inside that database. So it's not that crucial, but still, um, SQL Alchemy, which is the uh, SQL abstraction layer in OpenStack, so SQL Alchemy uh, performance using SSL is not known very much, so that might be a problem. Uh, so you should check that uh, if you if you're using MySQL and SSL, you should check the performance after applying the rules. Okay, I think we have only five minutes left. So I will go through the, uh, quickly through the modules. So Puppet modules we provide is uh, file integrity through uh, ID uh, with the rules, pre-configured rules. Uh, we also extend audit D. We provide uh, many, many, many interesting rules to, uh, to monitor the system activity. Uh, those, of course, those audit data goes into Logstash, and you can just uh, parse it, or uh, using Kibana, you can uh, correlate the, lo the logs. Uh, there is a problem inside of OpenStack that, uh, mm, what's the state of logging framework for now? Not known. Yeah, so one of the biggest problems with OpenStack is that there's no way to, uh, like, to keep track of the entire workflow. So we, if you launch a VM, it goes through different APIs, and there's no easy way to track the workflow, so what's happening? Like, there's no one tag with every request that goes through all the APIs. Uh, there, was an, there was a project to, uh, to implement that. I, unfortunately, I don't remember if it's uh, working or not, uh, but this is one of the biggest problems in case of keeping your logs and uh, keeping eye on what's going on inside the, inside the, um, the infrastructure. Uh, we also provide baseline module for security, which disables some um, many services. Actually, after the after the default installation of Red Hat or CentOS, there's plenty of services that are not uh, needed. We also tune um, CCTL mainly IPv4 stack, networking stack. Mm. Uh, we also in disable interactive startup. Mm. We set up password for single mode. Uh, we, prof we tune profile, uh, default system profile, uh, and also provide, how nice, we provide issue or issue net, whatever you use, and also SSH banner. This is needed, so you have to see the, if you log into the system, you have to see the banner that this system is PCI compliant. Uh, we provide module for Klamath, for, uh, for um, virus scanning. Klamath is not very good at that. Uh, last, I think last stats, it, it it finds about 65, 70% of, of uh, threats, so it's not the best tool, but that's open source. That's what we provide. You can easily replace it with something else. Uh, Control IPsec is the uh, module uh, for creating, automatically creating tunnels between controllers. Uh, we also tune system limits. Uh, limits. Uh, we add Logstash plus Kibana web UI and 0MQ, Kibana is in version two because version three uh, is uh, HTML, HTML5 based, so it needs to open a connection, actually to open a connection to the uh, browser, which in PCI world is probably impossible. Uh, most interesting part are predefined uh, OpenStack inputs and filters. Mm. We also tune PAM uh, stack, uh, password policies, we add uh, SSL support for Rabbit, uh, disable some root login, securing systems, securing SSH, uh, and also ch changing uh, sudo entirely. Uh, like in our implementation, we don't, uh, we don't uh, enable sudo su for root because it means that you lose tracking of what's going on in the system. Uh, what we don't include, we don't include secure images for VMs, that's totally up to you, but usually that falls into internal procedures, how to prepare images, so, uh, uh, so that's why we don't do it. We don't provide uh, glance protection in form of uh, scanning uh, images or scanning snapshots, etc., etc. but we provide some guidelines how to do it, mm, and we don't provide Swift encryption, but now Swift encryption is possible easily, 
when we were working on that, it was very hard to achieve. Now it's, uh, it's just a feature of Swift. Uh, okay. Uh, like, few tips. Uh, mm, you all probably know that compliance is not only technology. Technology is one part, I would say it's 10%. The rest is ongoing process and your procedures, the awareness inside your organization. So these tools will not uh, give you compliance. It's probably you and your organization to develop all that stuff. Uh, applying uh, your experience from virtualized uh, infrastructure, it's not the same in the cloud. It's exactly, it's not the same. Because of the dynamic nature of the cloud, uh, in my opinion, it's completely different uh, approach. So I would not apply experience from virtualized infrastructures onto the cloud. I tried because I have an experience in 100% uh, virtualized infrastructures with PCI, and it didn't work with cloud. Uh, because of this dynamic nature, automation is something you have to have. It's just it's a must. So you have to have Chef or Puppet. In our, in our case, it's Puppet. Uh, I think it's impossible to achieve uh, compliance in cloud infrastructure, not using uh, some kind of automation. Uh, if you're implementing that yourself, you should get an expert on PCI and on cloud, uh, obviously. Uh, and you have to find uh, cloud uh, our auditor, because cloud for traditional auditors, it's like a, like a nowhere ground. They just don't know what's going on. So this might be crucial, and this will be hard. I know it's changing, uh, but a year ago or half a year ago, it was very hard to find someone actually understanding cloud, cloud internals, how the applications are behaving in the cloud, and so on. Uh, and obviously, you should use quantum uh, for networking because with Nova Network, uh, it's possible to achieve compliance, but it's very hard, and you need additional layer of uh, automation just to manage networking. Uh, some notes from Gris release. Uh, I, was, I was talking about the security groups. So security groups are, are useless for uh, aggress filtering because it's buggy in Gris. It just does not work. We have a patch for that. Uh, I'm not sure if we submitted it. No, probably not. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, also, there's no TLS support in VNC. So your auditor might not require it, but if it's required, you have to take care of that. Uh, no image scanning, shredding, and so on. So this, is th this might be very crucial. So if you use snapshots inside your infrastructure, you might be leaving tracks of the data inside your infrastructure. If you're not shredding images like snapshots, uh, of machines and so on, you might be leaving data inside your infrastructure. This is, this is uh, very crucial. Uh, also, user management, uh, after um, removing user from, from Keystone or from, uh, from OpenStack, there's a lot of stuff uh, laying around. So we have scripts for cleaning this up. Uh, that's something you have to uh, take a look at. Uh, the problem with LDAP, there's no granular access lights, rights in, uh, in Keystone, no easy granular access lights. You can achieve that using additional tools, uh, editing all those JSON policies with, in every API, but there's no one point when you can uh, manage that. So LDAP is probably a uh, wise choice. And there's no default zero access policy which is required by uh, PCI, but that's actually easy to achieve. Uh, this, this is just a... Uh, uh, few, uh, two, actually two slides on requirement uh, 8.5. Uh, so you, you can see how much is left to you uh, after using the tools. This is the uh, analysis of the state of the compliance and all that red stuff is not implemented and that's something you have to do. The same with 1001. Uh, and okay, so the tools are not yet published. I hope they will be published when I'm back from summit, so it's next week. Uh, not end of 2003, this is very mm, like a conservative date. Uh, we have to clean, clean them up a little bit because they were only used internally, so we don't want to be ash you know, ashamed <laughs> of the, uh, of the um, quality. Uh, that's probably all. Any questions?
this is probably the biggest problem, the dynamic nature of the cloud. And uh, well, automations, automation is the solution because what you do to your auditor, you just show him your rules in your, in your tool, in, in a puppet. And they accept that. They say, okay, you, uh, you just make sure that all the agents are up everywhere, puppet agents or chef agents, and the rest is inside your automation. So that's the way to, to, to fight with the nature of the cloud, the changing nature of the cloud. So that's why we say automation is something you have to have. Any other questions? We probably don't have time, right? Okay, if there are no questions, I'm available somewhere. I will probably be at the Mirantis booth. Uh, so thank you very much. Uh, have a nice stay at the summit.